before we started, you had been talking, you had been mentioning that uh, you might have some some new things you could share with us. What's yeah, absolutely. So uh, I don't know. I don't know when this will actually air, and I don't know if that's that that's really relevant. But uh, the first week of De- weekend, the first weekend of December, Modifius hosted their own convention, virtual convention called ModCon, and during one panel on Saturday, they had an hour long like preview of all the stuff that Modifius is coming out with in the coming coming months and year. You know, including uh, uh, Dune and an Acton Cthulhu and uh, more Star Trek stuff. I mean, just they have a huge slate of stuff coming out which is just amazing to see because, you know, I've been involved with the company for five years now. And, you know, five years ago, they had like, you know, Conan, Star Trek and one or two other lines and then a whole bunch of like little one, one-offs. And now they've just exploded in, in all kinds of ways and shapes. And, you know, where they've got, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls and uh, um, uh, Fallout and just, you know, uh, uh, John, John Carter of Mars and just all kinds of stuff on the horizon. Um, but... You know, as far as Star Trek goes, they did announce some new stuff for Star Trek, which I'm happy to talk about here. Uh, we had already announced the uh, Shackleton Expanse campaign setting uh, a, a while back at another convention, uh, a virtual convention, but uh, we went into a, a tiny bit more detail. Uh, but that's coming out in uh, the second quarter, probably, you know, Mayish, Aprilish, Mayish, somewhere around there, whatever. Oh. You know, Q- Q2 is the safe one because that gives us a little bit of, w- a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and that's going to be a, uh, a full hardcover, uh, taking the living campaign components that we started in, you know, you, you know, we developed a living campaign of adventures that was kind of a continuing story set in both the original series and the next gen, uh, kind of a, 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 you know, a big storyline that bridged the two eras. And we took all that content and expanded it into a full campaign setting. So, you know, if you hearken back to like the classic D&D settings of like Forgotten Realms or Greyhawk, or uh, even Eberron, where you've got, you know, you get one book and it's got everything in it that you could possibly want to run with that setting. We, we've done that to some extent by detailing the Shackleton Expanse and Narendra Station, which the conceit of Narendra Station is it's the, it's the only jointly run Klingon and Federation station out there in space. And, we, you know, we, we thought it was a perfect time to, run, to do this book because the Klingon book had just come out, right? Yeah. So you get the Klingon book and now you can go into the Shackleton Expanse campaign setting which you could run either as Federation or as Klingon, right? I mean, it's up to you. If you're running a Klingon game, then by all means, play the campaign. And um, so it's not just the campaign setting, but it's also a huge 10-part um, epic storyline that we started in the living campaign. And now we'll be able to continue it and finish it in, in, the, in the context of the book. Because I know a lot of fans had played the living campaign. And then when we, when we brought out the, like the season one, quote unquote, season one finales in early 2019, they were like, okay, what's next? And, and we had gotten caught up on other stuff. And, you know, we realized that the release schedule that we wanted for the living campaign just wasn't realistic between development and approvals and all that other stuff. So we decided to, to let it sit for a little while. And then we came back to it and we were like, you know what, this makes more sense as a book. Uh, to, instead of trying to manage the, the regular release schedule, which was a huge, um, a huge challenge more than anything else, uh, we decided just to do, we, it would be more efficient to do it as one big book and then just drop this toolkit on game masters and players and say, here's the story, here's the setting, here's the station, here's all these cool NPCs and events and situations. Go, you know, knock yourself out, do whatever you want with it and have fun. And and I think that's what I loved so much about like Forgotten Realms, like that gray box set that came out way back when. Yeah. It's like, it's like I could do anything I want with that. And I could spend years as a game master or a player playing just that box set. And we would get, you know, tons of joy out of it. And so that's that's been my de- design philosophy for the Shackleton book is that uh, we're gonna we're gonna hit people over the head with so much content and, and so much little like nuggets and and ideas on every page that I'm hoping that they just mine it for details you know forever like I don't know but uh, hopefully they get a lot of joy out of it because uh, it's it's been a lot of fun to to write and edit and um, I'll just you know hopefully it, it, what's gonna be really interesting though you know is uh, and I'll stop babbling about it here in just a minute. Um, <laughs> It, it is the it is the first product really in our in the Star Trek Adventures line that is largely unique, right? It's not really canon based because right. the Shackleton right. the Shackleton Expanse is a, is a chunk of the Beta Quadrant that we created for the game, and CBS told us basically, you know, do what you want with it. You know, there's no other licensee using it. it you know, it's not in Star Trek Online. It's not in any of the comic books. Uh, it hasn't made an appearance in any of the novels, as far as I can tell, and. Um, 
So that we're like, we have this little chunk of the beta quadrant that we can do whatever we want with. And the CBS was totally cool with that. Um, and so th that's kind of a unique thing is like, there's this chunk of the, of the beta quadrant that, you know, as a player and as a game master, you can play with, and you can literally do anything you want with it. You don't have to worry about screwing up Canon because there is no Canon, you know, <laughs> and great. same thing with, yeah. And same thing with the Narendra station, right? That, that's a complete, complete fabrication on, on our part. So, you know, do what you want with that. Um, we are including uh, a handful of new species in the book. So there's going to be some new playable character species in there that aren't literally aren't anywhere else in the, in the, you know, the whole intellectual property. So hopefully, you know, wow. fans will appreciate that and go, Oh, you know, new section of space, new species. Let's, let's go crazy and have some fun with it. So I'm really excited to see what, uh, what the re reaction to it will be. Uh, you know, if, it, if it's horrible, then we'll never do it again. <laughs> but you know, if, if it's favorable, then, you know, we'll, we'll figure out what to do next. Uh, so we'll see. Um, so that's, that's Shackleton. So, so that'll be out, you know, Q2. Uh, they also announced, finally, uh, the Tricorder box set. And this is something that has been in development. I mean, literally, I was talking to Sam. Sam was the, Sam was the project manager before me. Uh, and then he got promoted to head of product at Modifius. And I took over from him on uh, Star Trek. But he, he had started putting the idea together for a tricorder box set like way back when we were first developing the line. He wanted to do he wanted to make sure that we had a board cube set for, yeah. for the super fans. And then he also wanted to do a smaller box set uh, that was a tricorder, like the original series tricorder for the original series fans. And uh, so what it is, it's going to be a, a cardboard box with a with a magnetic flip lid. And it's going to be styled to look like an original series tricorder. With a leather, with a you know a leatherette strap and everything, so you could literally use it for a cosplay, um, you know, accessory if you wanted to. Oh, and then inside the box is going to be uh, reference cards, you know, just like with the screens, um, a, a set of uh, character sheets for the Enterprise crew, uh, an original set of sheets for the Lexington crew. So the USS Lexington is another optional, you know, group you can play. Uh, there'll be a three-part campaign uh, in the. Uh, in a, you know, three, a, a campaign booklet uh, that I wrote. I mean, gosh, it's been three, it's been three years now uh, that I wrote, and then uh, a 300 page uh, digest of the rule book. Uh, so instead of having a full blown hardcover of the rule book, this will be a condensed 300 page version of the rule book, and it, it's going to carry all of the original series uh, layout. So if you're familiar with uh, some of the original series adventures we've done, or the um, uh, in Strange New Worlds, the, the adventure anthology, we have a different layout for the original series compared to the next generation, right? It's a different kind of, instead of the L cars, we went with like a, a white background layout. Yeah. Uh, so the entire, the entire set is laid out in that original series format look and feel. So the, uh, you know, I know we have a very large cadre of, uh, you know, original series fans who are like, we really want original series stuff. You know, even though the game rules and the game system are the same, no matter what era you're playing in, they really want the aesthetic look and feel of the original series. And for those folks, this is the set for them because it's, it's, it, it just oozes original series. And uh, great. to the point, I can't wait to see yeah, that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, that sounds great. I can't wait to see that. And I'm sure yeah, and I, that's yeah, going to show remember, up at some conventions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, oh, I'd love, if we ever get back to conventions, I'd love to see people using it. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we, we put so much, I put so much effort into making sure it was TOS because what we did is we did a top down rewrite of the core book uh, and, and I mean, an edit of the core book to take out all the next gen references uh -huh. and make sure that everything was focused on the original series to the point where like there was a lot of really good example text in the core book. And some of the examples were original series and some of them were next gen and some of them were DS9, right? Just based on whatever Nathan needed to write for the moment. But we, yeah. we went in and actually changed all of those examples to original series examples, just to make sure that they all fit the right aesthetic of the, of the, of the, of this particular book. Because yeah. I knew that like, if, if there was an original series fan reading it and they were reading about Worf or, uh, you know, Cisco, they'd be like, wait a minute, I'm being pulled out of the, I'm being pulled out of my era here, you know? So we tried to we tried to tidy that up a bit. That's the sort of attention to detail that, that makes you guys so great. I mean, <laughs> that I love to see in those books that you would go yeah. down there and change the examples. That That's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the crazy stuff I come up with at two o'clock in the morning when I'm staring at these at these files 
endlessly. And I'm like, what can I do to make this more interesting? I'm so tired. And then these stupid ideas come out of my head and it's like, oh, I could do this. I'm going to go through back through. I'm going to go back through the entire book and make sure that every single example is original series focus instead of next gen focus. Like if I, if I see one in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I need to change that. And then it's like, oh shoot. Now I got to go back through the whole book and change all of them because you know, if I've done one, I've got to do them all. Sure. Um, uh, so let's see. So, so it's the two sets of character sheets, the adventure booklet, the digest, the book. Oh, and we're also including dice. Uh, of course, dice are really important. We are including a uh, 5d20 and uh, 10 of the challenge dice. So 10, 10 challenge dice, the D6s with the Starfleet Delta on, on two faces and then the effect symbols on other faces. And then the D20s are gonna be a special color unique to this set. It's gonna be Kirk's lime green uh, shirt with a uh, gold ink on the on the letter on the numbers so it's it's, it's a lime green dice with gold lettering instead of the department colors that we used before and uh, when we did that i mean we just wanted to hit the the original series just as hard as we could because i know that kirk wore that green shirt for i don't know at least 20 or 30 episodes right so it's like that's so, that's the original series right there is so you've got game. dress dice <laughs> when you're playing a special <laughs> fancy game with a diplomat you pull out your dress dice that's there you great. go yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic i yeah. cannot wait to see this thing <laughs> yeah and, you know it's, it's funny I, I'll, I'll tell you something that I've, I've told literally no one else in public but it, just as far as that attention to detail um when sam told me that we were going to do a tricorder set we were talking about it at Gen Con a couple of years ago and yeah. when we were working on it. And uh, just because we were, I think it was Sunday afternoon at Gen Con. And if you've been to Gen Con, like Sunday's pretty dead when you're in the uh, in the dealer room, right? Because everybody's off doing events or they're starting to pack up and go home. But we were right. like, we, we knew we had half an hour before things closed down and we'd have to start packing up all the books and stuff. And we were just kind of like kibbissing back and forth. And I said, you know what, Sam, you know what would be really cool is if when we do that tricorder set, if there was some way we could buy some of those little brown and tan puff balls like those craft puff balls and pack it full of those things so that when a fan like got the tricorder and opened it there would just be this explosion of tribbles coming out of it that would be amazing and he kind of gave me this look and he was like i don't think we can do that and i was like well just you know see if you can do it but there was no way we could make it financially feasible but you know i had that i had the, and this is another you know late in the middle of the night thought i was like well maybe you could just ship all the tricorders to me along with like a shrink wrap machine and I'll just buy a whole bunch of these puffs in bulk and I'll just hand pack them myself and then and then you know shrink wrap them and mail them back to you but uh, just the logistics of that were un <laughs> unrealistic but I mean that's I wanted that because like as a fan I would sure. my mind would be blown if that happened like if I got a tricorder in the in the mail and I opened the damn thing and it like tribbles fell everywhere I would I would totally totally lose my mind so all I can say to fans is like, just imagine when you finally buy the tricorder set and you open it, just imagine a virtual cascade of tribbles flying out of it. And, uh, and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be pleased if you actually think of that. So oh, well, that's the attention to detail that we, re that I really wanted, but then yeah. you, of course, reality has to come into play and, uh, and sure, me sure. shatter my dreams. <laughs> oh, somebody close that door, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, so going, so going back then, so we, we announced the Shackleton book, although of course that wasn't really an announcement. We already announced that we did announce the tricorder. Um, and then the other big piece of news, uh, you know, depending on where you are in your in your Trek fandom, uh, we announced that uh, CBS added uh, both Picard and Discovery to our licenses. So we, we now have the ability to do stuff for Discovery and for Picard, which, wow. uh, of course, we're all, we're all super excited about. Um, yeah. You know, I, I've, I've long said that, uh, you know, love it or hate it, they're the new shows on the screen. And love it or hate it, Discovery and Picard are bringing in new fans to the to the fan base you know they're making new trek trekkers and trekkies and uh you know um you know money making aside like you want to service those new fans right you want to give those new fans stuff to stuff to enjoy whether it's game material or books or merchandise or whatever sure and because yeah. uh, that's just a it's just a right market and they, they're ready for new stuff and they want they want to play the game like i mean this game is very popular online amazingly enough and um they, they, a lot of fans like Discovery and a lot of fans like Picard and, and they want to see game stuff where we see, I see questions about it all the time on social media and we've had to be quiet about it for a while here, um, but they finally announced it. So you can look forward to Discovery stuff and Picard stuff in the, in the coming future here, which is uh, super exciting for me because that just means 
we got more stuff to work on. And, uh, you know, if, if we do it well, then, I, you know, we know that CBS also has lower decks and they've got Strange New Worlds coming and they've got uh, Prodigy coming. And, uh, you know, who, who knows what other series they're, they're going to be working up, right? I mean, I think uh, the last interview I heard from uh, Kurtzman is that they're looking at another 10 years of Star Trek on, on screen, right? From <laughs> for, across all their different series. And, uh, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, you know, if, if we keep doing Strange New World or if we, if we keep doing uh, Star Trek Adventures and not sucking it up, then <laughs> we're going to be around for a while, hopefully. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, for now, at least the next couple of years look pretty good. We, we've got the release schedule pretty well laid out for like the next, I think, 18 months. And we're already th we're already thinking about, you know, 22 and beyond. So, you know, Star Trek Adventures is, is going to be around for a good long time. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully folks enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, as long as you don't blow all your money on tribbles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds really yeah. exciting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, congratulations. Uh, yeah, thanks. That sounds really good. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. And, you know, it, I, you know I, I've mentioned this on social media, but uh, um, they didn't announce everything we already have in the works. So there, are, there is more to come and there is more to announce. Uh, those were the those were the four big things that they were comfortable announcing at uh, at this uh, you know at, at this event. Uh, so just uh, stay tuned. You know, I, I joke with the fans a lot on social media, and I've been telling them for months to start saving up your latinum. And uh, I think a lot of them just kind of like, yeah, whatever, pass it off. And then we drop these announcements on them, and they're like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess we should have listened to you. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, the pretty yeah. exciting stuff. I look yeah. forward to that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's very exciting, and you know, again, I think I told you guys last time. I am, I am grateful every day to be working on this game with such great people uh, on the team, but also for all the fans. Like we're we're huge Star Trek fans, and we're doing it for the Star Trek fans. And I hope they see it on every you know on every page and every book because these are truly truly labors of love. And uh, I am, I am gratified and humbled that the the like the fan response online. I mean, it, it's just res it, it's unbelievable how positive the feedback is overall uh you know i mean just as a you know as a creator it's it's hard to hard to hard to resist the uh the joy that it brings to so many people especially right now in uh in this crazy uh in this crazy covid world that we're living where people are isolated but but still playing games online right and and to play a to play a game that is so focused on hope and humanity and a positive future is uh, is bringing a lot of meaning to a lot of people, and uh, I mean that's, I mean how how do I how do I put a value on that, right? It's like we're responsible for doing that, and and we're bringing it to you, and and, and they're enjoying it. So um, I'll try not to get uh, worked up about it. <laughs> oh no, it's worth it's getting worked stuff, up man. for. You guys are doing a great job, and and you. and uh, you know you. you're right. If 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 there's ever a time for Star Trek, that's now. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, I remember when uh, when they announced uh, Strange New Worlds, and uh, Anson Mount and Ethan Peck and uh, uh, Rebecca Romijn, uh They were they did that video announcement right when they announced it, and they were mm -hmm. like, you know, now more than ever we need Star Trek, and and it was like, oh, so it was so positive and so uplifting, and I was like, yes, that's exactly what we want to be doing. That's how we need to how we need to be, you know, positioning Star Trek Adventures is that. It's, it's not just another RPG. It's it's something you know. It's something a little different because it's Star Trek. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, we'll see we'll see how it goes. I mean, we're 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 on a good. We're almost at, at the end of four years now. Shockingly enough, and we've got more to go. So, wow. uh, pl plenty of runway left. I mean, even if we didn't get Discovery and Picard, we still got plenty of products that we can release for the game that that we still haven't really touched on yet. Right? You know, like we could sure. do a, a time travel book or a. Um, alternate universe book or a starships book i mean there's just plenty of stuff that we can still oh, yeah. um still work on but you know fortunately these new licenses are coming out and uh you know fortunately cbs is really happy with the work that we've done and uh and they're and they were willing to 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 bring you know add uh discovery and uh and picard to our license and uh i mean that's that's a testament to the entire team at modifius honestly is like if we weren't putting out if we weren't doing our best to put put out the best product we could, I think CBS, you know, I mean, they're, they're the licensor, they own the, the rights, right? They'd probably say, uh, you know, step it up or, or you know, step <laughs> off and we'll find someone else or, or sure. you know, someone else can, can take the license. But, uh, sure. you know, sure. so far, so good. Yeah, no, that's great. All right. Well, thank yeah. you for coming back. It's been a joy to talk Anytime. to you again. And, and uh, thank you for your work. This is really fantastic. Yeah. And thank you for all those 
those great tidbits. Lots of fantastic, exciting things coming up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. And, and like I said, this is the first, the first chance I've had to do a, a chat with anybody after ModCon. So uh, you're getting the, uh, exclusive poop here on a lot of this stuff so oh, right. <laughs> like the fandom as a whole super awesome and uh you know we wouldn't be doing this without them and we couldn't do it without them so i'm i'm grateful for every every single fan out there um thank you and uh, and thank both of you all right excellent well i hope our viewers are thrilled by all this news um i know we are <laughs> yeah. you, you um, see I'm, I'm bouncing man <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to, i'm ready to work on all of it <laughs> So to our viewers, um, thank you for watching. Um, please be safe and have a good day.